Act 2. Alban. Early morning in the beginning of winter. A wood outside the tent of Deirdre and Nishi. Lorkem comes in, muffled in a cloak. Lorkem, calling. Deirdre. Deirdre. Deirdre, coming from tent, radiant and mature. My welcome, Lorkem. Who's Kerig is rowing from Ulster? I saw the oars through the tops of the trees and I thought it was you was coming towards us. I came in the shower was before the dawn. And who is coming? Lower Kem, mournfully. Let you not be startled or taking it bad, Deirdre. It's Fergus bringing messages of peace from Conahar to take Nishi and his brothers back to even. Sitting down. Deirdre, lightly. Nishi and his brothers are well pleased this place. And what would take them back to Conahar and Ulster? Lower Kem. Their like would go any place where they'd see death standing. With more agitation. I'm in dread. Konohara wants to have yourself, and to kill Nishi. And that'll be the ruin of the sons of Wisna. I'm silly maybe to be dreading the like, but those have a great love for yourself have a right to be in dread always. Deirdre. Even should be no safe place for myself and Nishi. And isn't it a hard thing when they'll leave us no peace, Lower Kem, and we so quiet in the woods? Lower Kem, impressively. It's a hard thing, surely. But let you take my word and swear Nishi by the earth, and the sun over it in the four quarters of the moon he'll not go back to even for good faith or bad faith at the time Conahar's keeping the high throne of Ireland. It's that would save you, surely. Deirdre, without hope. There's little power in oaths to stop that coming. And little power in what I do to Lower Kem to change the story of Conahar and Nishi and the things old men foretold. Lower Kem, aggressively. Was there little power in what you did the night you dressed in your finery and ran Nishi along with you in spite of Conhar and the big nobles did dread the blackness of your luck? It was power enough you had that night to bring his stress and anguish. And now I'm pointing you away to save Nishi. You'll not stir stick or straw to aid me? Deirdre, a little haughtily. Let you not raise your voice against me, Lower Kem, if you have great will itself to guard Nishi. Lower Kem, breaking out in anger. Nishi, is it? I didn't care if the crows were stripping his thigh bones at the dawn of day. It's to stop your own despair and wailing, and you keeping up in a cold bed without the man you have your heart on, I'm raging now. Starting up with temper. Yet there's more men than Nishi is in it. And maybe I was a big fool thinking his dangers, and this day would fill you up with dread. Deirdre, sharply. Let you end such talking as a fool's only. When it's well you know if the things harm Nishi, it isn't I would live after him. It's well you know it's this night I'm dreading seven years. And I find nights watching the heifers walk into the haggard with long shadows on the grass. Or the time I've been stretched in the sunshine when I've heard a windla and Arden stepping lightly and they sang, Was there ever the like of Deirdre for happy and a sleepy queen? Lower Kem, not fully pacified. And yet he'll go and welcome, is it, if Nietzsche chooses? I've dread going or staying, Lower Kem. It's lonesome this place having happiness like ours till I'm asking each day, Will this day match yesterday? And will tomorrow make a good place besides the same day in the year that's gone? And wondering at all times is a game worth playing, living on until you're dried and old and our joy is gone forever. Lower Kem, if it's that ails you, I tell you there's little hurt getting old, though young girls and poets do be storming at the shapes of age. There's little hurt getting old, saving when you're looking back, and seeing the young you have a love for breaking up their hearts with folly. Going to Deirdre, making a last attempt. Take my word and stop, Nishi. And the day'll come you'll have more joy having the senses of an old woman and you with your little grandsons shrieking around you, then I'd have this night putting on the red mouth and the white arms you have to go walking lonesome byways with a gamey king. It's little joy of a young woman or an old woman will have from this day, surely. But what use is it in our talking when there's Nishi on the foreshore and Fergus with them? Lower Kem, getting up despairingly. I'm late so with my warnings. For Fergus had talked the moon over to take a new path in the sky. You'll not stop him this day. And isn't it a strange story you were a plague and torment since you were that height to those who hang their lifetimes on your voice? Overcome with trouble, gathering her cloak about her. I don't think bad of my crying. I'm not the like of many, and I'd see a score of naked corpses and not heed them at all. But I'm destroyed seeing yourself in your hour of joy when the end is coming, surely. Owen comes in quickly, rather ragged, bows to Deirdre. Owen to lower him. Fergus's men are calling you. You were seen on the path and he and Nishi want you for the talk below. Lower Kim, looking at him with dislike. 
Yourself's an ill lucky thing to me to mourn in this the like of this. Yet if you are a spy itself, I'll go and give my word that's one thing surely. She goes out slowly. I went to Deirdre. So I found you alone. And I after waiting these three weeks getting argue in asthma and the chill of the bogs till I saw Nishi cut with Fergus. I've heard news of Fergus. What brought you from Ulster? Owen, who has been searching, finds a loaf and sits down eating greedily. The full moon I'm taking and it's squeezing the crack of my skull. Was there ever a man crossed nine waves after a fool's wife and he not away in his head? Deirdre, absently. It should be a long time since you left even, where there's civil tea and speech with queens. It's a long while, surely. It's three weeks I am losing my manners besides the Saxon bullfrogs at the head of the bog. Three weeks is a long space. And yet you're seven years spansel with Nishi in the pair. Deirdre, beginning to fold up her jewels. Three weeks of your days might be long, surely. Yet seven years are short space for the like of Nishi and myself. Owen, derisively. <laughs> if there are a short space, there aren't many the like of you. Wasn't there a queen in Tara had to walk out every morning till she'd meet a stranger and see the flame of courtship leaping up within his eye? Tell me now. Leaning towards her. How do you well please that length with the same man snorting next to you at dawn of day? Deirdre, very quietly. Am I well pleased seven years seeing the same sun throwing light across the branches at the dawn of day? With abstracted feeling. It's a heart attack to the wise that it's for a short space we have the same things only. Yet the earth itself is a silly place maybe when a man's a fool and talker. Well, go take your choice. Stay here and rot with Nishi or go to Konohar and even. Konohar's a swelling belly and eyes falling down from his shining crown. Nishi should be stale and weary yet. There are many roads, Deirdre. He goes towards her. And I tell you, I leave her be bleaching in a bog hold and living on without a touch of kindness from your eyes and voice. It's a poor thing to be so lonesome you'd squeeze kisses on a cur dog's nose. Deirdre, are there no women like yourself could be friends in even? Owen, vehemently, there are none like you, Deirdre. It's for that I'm asking. Are you going back this night with Fergus? I will go where Nishi chooses. It's Nishi, Nishi, is it? Then I tell you, you have a great sport one day, seeing Nishi getting a harness in his two sheep size and he looking on yourself. Would you credit it? My father used to be in the broom and hear their kiss and lower him with a little bird chirping out above their heads. And now she'd scare a raven from a carcass on a hill. <sighs> Queens get old, Deirdre, with their white and long arms going from them, and their backs whooping. I tell you, it's a poor thing to see a queen's nose reaching down to scrape her chin. Deirdre, looking out, a little uneasy at his tone. Nishi and Fergus are coming down the path. I'll go so. For if I had you seven years, I'd be jealous of the midges and the dust is in the air. With a sort of warning in his voice, muffling himself behind his cloak. I'll give you a riddle, Deirdre. Why isn't my father as ugly as old Kanahar? It's because Nishi killed him. With a curious expression. Think of that and you'll wake at night hearing Nishi snoring. Or the night you'll hear strange stories of the things I've done in Alban, or in Ulster either. He goes out, and in a moment Nishi and Fergus come in on the other side. Nishi, gaily. Fergus has brought messages of peace from Konohar. He is welcome. Let you rest, Fergus. You should be hot and thirsty after mounting the rocks. Fergus. It's a sunny nook you found in Alban. Yet any man would be well pleased mounting higher rocks to fetch yourself and Nishi back to even. Deirdre, with keenness. They've answered? They would go? Fergus, benignly. They have not. Deirdre begins to net. But when I was a young man, we'd have given a lifetime to be in Ireland a score of weeks. And to this day, the old men have nothing so heavy as knowing it's in a short while they'll lose the high skies or over Ireland and the lonesome mornings with birds crying on the bogs. Let you come this day, for there's no place but Ireland where the gale can have peace always. 
Nishi, gruffly. It's true, surely. Yet we've better this place while Konohar's in even Vaha. Fergus, giving him parchments. These are your sureties with Konohar's seal. To Deirdre, who stops netting during his speech. You'll not be young always, and it's time you are making yourselves ready for the years will come, building up a homely done besides the seas of Ireland, and getting in your children from the prince's wives. It's little joy wandering till age is on you and your youth is gone away. So you'd best come this night, for you'd have great pleasure putting out your foot and saying, I am in Ireland, surely. Deirdre, it isn't pleasure I'd have while Conahar's still king in even. Fergus, almost annoyed, would you doubt the seals of Conal Karna and the kings of Meath? More gently, it's easy being fearful. And you alone in the woods, yet it would be a poor thing if a timid woman could turn the sons of a Wisna from the life of kings. Let you be thinking on the years to come, Jedra, and the way you'd have a right to see Nishi a high and white-haired justice beside some king of even. Wouldn't it be a poor story if a queen the like of you should have no thought but to be scraping up her hours dallying in the sunshine with a son of kings? Deirdre, turning away a little haughtily. I leave the choice to Nishi. Turning back towards Fergus. Yet you do well, Fergus, to go on your own way, for the sake of your own years, so you'll not be saying until your hour of death maybe it was yourself brought Nishi and his brothers to a grave was scooped by treachery. She goes into tent. Fergus. It's a poor thing to see a queen so lonesome and afraid. He watches till he is sure Deirdre cannot hear him. Listen now to what I'm saying. You do well to come back to men and women are your matching comrades, and not be lingering until the day that you'll grow weary and hurt Deirdre showing her the hardness in your eyes. You've been here years and plenty to know is the truth I'm saying. Deirdre comes out of tent with a horn of wine. She catches the beginning of Nishi's speech and stops with a stony wonder. Nishi, very thoughtfully. I'll not tell you a lie. There have been days a while past when I've been throwing a line for salmon, or watching for the runs of hares that I've had a dread upon me a day had come I'd weary of her voice. And dead red sea I'd wearied. Fergus, sympathetic but triumphant. I knew it, Nishi. And take my word, Deirdre, seen your dread, and she'll have no peace from this out in the woods. Nishi, with confidence. She's not seen it. Deirdre's not thought of getting old or wearied. It's that puts wonder in her ways. And she with spirits would keep bravery and laughter in a town with plague. Deirdre drops the horn of wine and crouches down where she is. <laughs> That's humor, Oliva. But we've no call going too far, with one word borrowing another. Will you come this night to even Vaha? I've had dreams of getting old and weary and losing my delight in Deirdre. <laughs> but my dreams were dreams only. What are Conahar's seal and all your talk of even and the fools of meat besides one evening in Glen Masson? We'll stay this place till our lives and time are worn out. It's that word you may take in your courage to Conahar and even. Fergus, gathering up his parchments. And you won't go, surely? I will not. I've had dread, I tell you, dread winter and summer and the autumn and the springtime, even when there's a bird in every bush making his own stir to the fall of night. But this talk's brought me ease, and I see we're as happy as the leaves on the young trees, and will be so ever and always, though we live the age of the eagle and the salmon and the crow of Britain. Fergus, very much annoyed. Where are your brothers? My message is for them also. You'll see them above, chasing otters by the stream. Fergus, bitterly. <laughs> it isn't much I was mistaken thinking you were hunters only. He goes. Nishi turns towards tent and sees Deirdre crouching down with her cloak round her face. Deirdre comes out. Nishi. You've heard my words to Fergus? A pause. He puts his arms round her. Leave troubling and we'll go this night to Glendaru where the salmon will be running with the tide. Deirdre crosses and sits down. Deirdre, in a very low voice. With the tide in a little while, we will be journeying again. Or is it our blood? Maybe we'll be running away. 
She turns and clings to him. The dawn and evening are a little while. The winter and the summer pass quickly. In what way would you and I, Nishi, have joy forever? We'll have the joy as highest till our ages come. But it isn't Fergus's talk of great deeds could take us back to even. It isn't two great deeds you're going out but near troubles. And the shortening of your days, the time they are brought and sunny, isn't it a poor thing that I, Dedra, could not hold you away? I've said we'd stay in Alban always. There's no place to stay always. It's a long time we've had, pressing the lips together, going up and down, resting in our arms, Nishi, walking with the smell of June in the tops of grasses and listening to the birds in the branches at our highest. It's a long time we've had, but the end has come, surely. Would you have us go to even? Though if any ask the reason, we do not know it, and we journeying as the thrushes come from the north, or young birds fly out on a dark sea? There's reason all times for an end that's come, and I'm well pleased, Nishi, we're going forward in the winter the time the sun was in a low place, and the moon has her mastery in a dark sky, for it's you and I are well lodged our last day. Where there is a light between the clear trees and the berries on the thorns are a red wall. Nishi, with a new rush of love, eagerly. If our time this place is ended, come away without a Wenle and Arden in the woods of the east, for it's right to be away from all people when two lovers have their love only. Come away and we'll be safe always. Deirdre, broken-hearted. There's no safe place, Nishi, on the ridge of the world. And it's in the quiet woods I've seen them dig in our grave, throwing out the clay on leaves are bright and withered. Nishi, still more eagerly. Come away, Deirdre. And it's little we'll think of safety of the grave beyond it. And we were resting in a little corner beyond the daytime and the long night. Deirdre, clear and gravely. It's this hour where between the daytime and the night where there is sleep forever. And isn't it a better thing to be following on to a near death than to be bending the head down and dragging with the feet and seeing one day a blight showing upon the love where it is so sweet and tender? Nishi, his voice broken with distraction. If a near death is coming, what will be my trouble losing the earth and the stars over it? And you, Deirdre, are their flame and bright crown. Come away into the safety of the woods. Deirdre, shaking her head slowly. There are as many ways to wither love as there are stars in the night of shaman. But there is no way to keep life or love with a short space only. It's for that there's nothing lonesome like a lover is watching out the time most lovers do be sleeping. It's for that we're setting out for even Vaha when the tide turns on the sand. Nishi, giving in. You're right, maybe. It should be a poor thing to see great lovers and they sleepy and old. Deirdre, with a more tender intensity. We're seven years without roughness or grown weary. Seven years so sweet and shining. Gods would be hard set to give us seven days to like of them. It's for that we're going to even, where there'll be a rest forever, or a place for forgetting in great crowds and they making a stir. Nishi, very softly. We'll go, Shirley, in place of keeping a watch on a love had no match in it wasting away. They cling to each other for a moment. Then Deirdre stands up slowly and goes into the tent with her head bowed down without looking at Nishi. Nishi sits with his head bowed. Owen runs in stealthily, comes behind Nishi, and seizes him round the arms. Nishi shakes him off and whips out his sword. Owen, screaming with derisive laughter and showing his empty hands. <laughs> ah, Nishi, wasn't it well I didn't kill you that time? That was a fright you got. I've been watching Fergus above, don't be frightened, and I've come down to see him getting the cold shoulder and going off alone. <laughs> there he is. Voices are heard on right, and a winla and Arden, Fergus, and Lowercombe come in. They are all subdued like men at a queen's wake. Nishi goes to Fergus, putting up his sword. We are going back when the tide turns. I and Deirdre with yourself. All. Going back? Fergus. You have a choice wise men will be glad of in the five ends of Ireland. Owen. Wise men, is it? And they going back to Conahar? I could stop them only Nishi put in his sword among my father's ribs. And when a man's done that, he'll not credit your oath. Go on to Conahar. 
Go on, Conahar. I can tell if plots and tricks and spies were well paid for their play. He throws up a bag of gold. How you paid, Fergus? He scatters gold pieces over Fergus. He's raving. Seize him. Owen, flying between them. You won't. Let a lot of you be off to even, but I'll be off before you. Dead men, dead men, men who'll die for Deirdre's beauty, I'll be before you in the grave. Owen runs out with his knife in his hand. They all look after him, except for Loacum, who looks out and then clasps her hand. Deirdre comes out to her in a dark cloak. Deirdre. What has happened? Loacum. It's Owen gone rage and mad, and he have to split in his gullet beyond at the butt of the stone. There was ill luck this day in his eye, and he knew a power if he'd said it all. Nishi comes back, followed by the others. Awinla, coming in very excited. That man knew plots of Conahar's. Will not go to even where Conahar may love her and has hatred for yourself. Fergus, would you mind a fool and raver? Awinla, it's many times there's more sense in madmen than the wise. We will not obey Conahar. Nishi. I and Deirdre have chosen. We will go back with Fergus. Arden. We will not go back. We will burn your Keurigs by the sea. Fergus. My sons and I will guard them. Awinla. We will blow the horn of Wisna and our friends will come to aid us. Nishi. It is my friends will come. Your friends will bind your hands and you out of your wits. Deirdre. Comes forward quickly and comes between Awinla and Nishi. For seven years the sons of Wisna have not raised their voices in a quarrel. Awinla. We will not take you to even. Arden. It is Konahar has broke our peace. Awinla. Stop Nishi going. What way would we live if Konahar should take you from us? Deirdre. Winningly putting her hands on his shoulders. There is no one could take me from you. I have chosen to go back with Fergus. Will you quarrel with me, Awinla, though I have been your queen these seven years in Alban? Awinla. Subsiding suddenly. Nishi has no call to take you. Arden, where are you going? Deirdre, to both of them and the others. It is my wish. It may be I will not have Nishi growing an old man in Alban with an old woman at his side, and young girls pointing out and saying, that is Deirdre and Nishi, had great beauty in their youth. It may be we do well put a sharp end to the day as brave and glorious as our fathers put a sharp end to the days of the kings of Ireland. Or that I'm wishing to set my foot on sleeve for, where I was running one time and leap in the streams. To lower chem. And that I'd be well pleased to see our little apple trees lower chem, behind our cabin on the hill. Or that I've learned, Fergus, it's a lonesome thing to be away from Ireland always. Owinla, giving in. There is no place will be lonesome to us from this out and we thinking on our seven years in Alban. Deirdre, it's in this place we'll be lonesome in the end. Tanishi, take down Fergus to the sea. He has been a guest, had a hard welcome, and he brings messages of peace. Fergus, we will make your carry ready, and it fitted for the voyage of a king. He goes with Nishi. Deirdre, take your spears of Winla and Arden, and go down before me, and take your horse boys to be carrying my cloaks around the threshold. Owinla, obeying. It's with a poor heart we'll carry our things this day. We have carried merrily so often, and we hungry and cold. They gather up things and go out. Deirdre, to Lower Chem. Go you too, Lower Chem. You're old. I will follow quickly. Lower Cam. I'm old, Shirley. And the hopes I had my pride in are broken and torn. She goes out with a look of awe at Deirdre. Deirdre clasping her hands. Woods of Quan. It's seven years we've had a life was joy only, and this day we're going west. This day we're facing death, maybe, and goes and looks towards Owen. Death should be a poor, untidy thing. Though it's a queen that dies. She goes out slowly.
curtain. <laughs>